Hello everybody, this is my review of the Nikon EM. I thought I'd make this review, or sort of video, because within kind of Nikon SLR film collecting circles, it's a bit of a looked down upon camera. Um, and so I thought I'd give you my sort of view on it and some facts about the camera. So it's lightweight, it's easy to use. Um, you can concentrate on composition because you just set the shutter, sorry, you set the aperture and it works out the shutter speed for you. Um, so there's no shutter speed dial there. I tend to shoot in aperture priority anyway, uh, most of the time. So I don't miss the shutter speed dial uh, when I use this camera. Um, I tend to take the camera places that I wouldn't want my F2 or F3 to go. Uh, if there's sand or it's a sort of night out drinking, I don't want to risk them getting dropped and dented, uh, then I'll take this EM. Um, it's pretty tough, uh, but if something did happen to it, I could pick up another one off eBay relatively cheaply for sort of 20 or 30 pounds for the body only. Uh, so some facts about the camera. Uh, it was made from 79 to 82. It was designed and marketed for women photographers by Nikon. Um, they kind of were aiming for women wanting their first SLR. Uh, it was only made in black, even though cameras uh, made by Nikon before then and after, uh, the success to this being the FG, were made in silver. I, for some reason, only made these in black. Uh, although, there is a later version, which I also picked up quite cheap, um, and the later version has silver exposure comp button and a silver battery check button and a metal uh, lens release button that you press and then you can bring the take the lens off whereas on the early versions which are sort of serial numbers uh, 6.5 million and down uh, generally it's got a blue button there and there and that's all just black plastic the other difference was the rewind crank, um, from what I've read, it was a bit weaker on these early models and on the later ones they've made it a bit thicker and a bit stronger, although to me they look pretty much identical. Um, so you, if you were looking to get one, maybe get a, a later one with the silver button, um, although I've I used both of them, I've noticed no major difference. Okay. Uh, it's got 60-40 Nikon center weighted exposure metering. It takes the MDE motor drive, which is this here. Uh, I shall put that on. So, just line that up there. And then, I'm turning that the right way. Oops. <laughs> There you go, and that's still a fairly small camera, it's still very lightweight. Uh, it was sold with E-series lenses, uh, like these ones here, and the 50mm E-series lens has um, become harder to get recently on eBay in the last few years because it, it, you know, knowledge has, has been shared um, on YouTube and on websites that these lenses are incredibly uh, sharp and optically uh, as good as a lot of the uh, sort of more expensive Nikon 50mm lenses at the time. There were two versions as well. I think this is the earlier version here. Um, and then you can see sort of cosmetically this later version has the metal collar. There looks a bit nicer. But otherwise, I mean, they're, they're identical really. So that's the kind of early version and the late version of the camera. And you see from the back they're the same and from the front. Um, I've also got, uh, it came with the motor drive, you could get this motor drive kind of camera case that goes on like that. It's quite a handsome setup there with those, that case on the motor drive like that. And there we go. Um, so it's a all-round really lovely camera. Um, some of the E-series lenses that came out at the time with it 
uh, was this sort of 35 millimeter 2.5 so it was a hundred millimeter um, and there was a few zoom lenses as well um, one of the lenses that came with it when I got mine was was this one the um, 43 to 86 um, which I tend to use prime lenses so I haven't used that much uh, but um, it's a great little camera, very lightweight, um, and because they're fairly inexpensive, um, you don't have to worry about it too much. Uh, one of the interesting things about this camera, although it's electronic, and you just set the aperture, take the shot, and it's worked out the shutter speed, which when you're looking through the viewfinder, there's a shutter speed scale down the left hand side and the needle goes up and down that scale depending on you know the light telling you what shutter speed you'll get so if you were trying to take a photo of some action or sports and you wanted a fast shutter speed you'd look through and you see where the needle was and if it wasn't say a, a thousandth of a second you'd you know uh, move it maybe to a f4 f2 let more light through and then that needle will go up um, but you know if you wanted to take a photo where you wanted everything in focus um, say set f8 or f11 and that needle will go down depending on the available light um, it tops out at uh, where it goes from like one second to one thousandth, one thousandth of a second um, so if the needle's all the way up at one thousandth of a second on a really sunny day and you've got it on f1.8 then there's a good chance that if the scale showed up to sort of two thousandths of a second, it would show you that you're about to um, overexpose because this camera can't shoot faster than one thousandth of a second. So I keep an eye on the needle when I'm looking through, make sure it's not absolutely at the absolute max of the available shutter speeds because uh, I don't want to overexpose the shot. Now, if there are no batteries in this camera, you'd think, oh, well, it won't work. But Nikon had a real thing about, well, all their cameras at that time should be able to work to some limited degree, even with no batteries. So, if the batteries weren't in this camera, what I would do is set it to M90, which would be manual 90, and it will shoot at a 90th of a second, and then I'll have to look through and use that, uh, adjust the aperture, uh, the f-stop, and see what shutter speed I'm gonna get. Uh, you've also got bulb. But then what I've read is in the Nikon service manual, so it wasn't kind of public knowledge at the time, if you leave it in auto with no batteries, it just default shoots everything at a thousandth of a second. So actually you've got a thousandth of a second, a ninetieth of a second and bulb with no batteries. Um, but batteries, uh, it takes uh, those little watch batteries, um, it was LR44s, two of those, and they last for years, so um, I've never had them uh, run out of uh, battery since I've had these really and they're great cameras um, really I mean the kind of final thing really to say was that when this came out it was a bit of a marketing failure uh, the older Nikon users they wanted more manual controls and uh, the female beginner photographers found the idea of a simple for women SLR camera a tad condescending uh, quite rightly and so they opted for cameras with more manual controls which kind of showed Nikon really that they shouldn't uh, should have marketed it in that way but um, if you forget the marketing and just look at it as a camera on its own in 2017 uh, it's a film camera that you can put you know a lot of Nikon lenses on any AI AIS lenses um, will go on this um, it takes just as good photos as far more expensive heavier cameras um, so it's a great holiday camera if you look at this with the motor drive compared to a Nikon F2 with a motor drive you can kind of see this <laughs> the difference in size and believe me the difference in weight as well um, so I would say go out and get one because these are great cameras and it was also um, designed by the Italian car designer, and I'm going to get the name pronounced badly, but was it Giorgetto uh, Giganio, who um, uh, later on designed the F3, uh, the Nikon F3, and put the red stripe on, which is a really nice camera. 
Um, so yeah, that was it. Thank you very much. Uh, like and share these videos and comments if you enjoy them and I'll make more. Thank you.